morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. There we go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, glory to God for God is good and he is gracious and his mercy and love endures forever. Good morning, everybody. This is your morning medicine and the doctor is in the house. Today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. And the Bible says, A person will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the work of a person's hands will reward him. Let me say that again. A person will be satisfied with good by the fruit of their mouth, and the work of of a person's hands will reward him. You know, one of the things that I want to dive in for this morning medicine is God's sovereignty. We serve a sovereign God. He's sovereign. And I think it's hard to kind of comprehend. Matter of fact, there's no thinking it is. God. Isaiah 55 says his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So it's really hard to grab hold of God. And his ways and the way he thinks. And that's why I'm so grateful that he came down and wrapped himself in flesh and dwelt amongst us. The Bible says he did that as a demonstration that he could relate to us and amongst other things. But God's sovereignty in that, that a God who sits high will come down low. will come on this old dusty, old dirty old earth and leave the great streets of heaven where they say it's paved in gold. Is anybody with me this morning? About to put on my Baptist hat for a minute. But God's sovereignty is just, it's indescribable. And what I... What I was thinking about this morning is that we serve a God who is God all by himself. He can do whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it. And whenever he chooses to do it, God is God all alone. The Bible says he's faithful even when we're not. God is always faithful. God is a God who does not lie. God is God all by himself. But this is the part that fathoms that really kind of gets me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the part that kind of gets me. God is a God who's God alone. And yet he can do everything by himself. But yet somewhere in there within his sovereignty, he has made a way for us to be a part of his plan and what he's doing. Man, I can't even quite grasp it. I don't, I don't even quite understand it because when I look at my life, I don't even know why he would even pick me. But yet somehow in God's sovereignty, in his will, he's given us a part to play. I mean, that, that's really something we shouldn't take lightly because he really does not need to do it. The Lord doesn't need me to speak right now. We see in the book of Genesis, he had donkeys speak for him. Not in the book of Genesis, but in the book of Numbers. God has used a myriad of things to communicate his message. But somehow in this whole plan of his, he's allowed me 
called me to be used for such a time as this. His sovereignty. I don't really think we can quite grab it. That this God who stands alone but will not accomplish some things unless we do it. That he has given us a part to play in a salvation plan. He's the God who saves, but yet he uses us to get the message to save. He uses our character. He uses our influence. He uses all these things to fulfill his will. As in, we have a part to play. I, I don't know, man. That, that, that thing really gets to me. And for our morning medicine, I want that to be the highlight of our message for this morning. Your part that you have to play. Do your part. As a matter of fact, let me ask that question. Are you doing your part? God in his sovereignty has allowed us to play a part in his plan. God's sovereignty. You and me have been called to fulfill a need on earth. And I'm just saying, do you really understand your part that you play every single day that God has given you breath in your body? If you didn't have a part to play, it's nothing for him to remove that breath. It's nothing for God, for he giveth life and he taketh life, for life belongs to him. But yet, since we have breath in our body, that in itself should be a conviction that we have a part to play in this thing. Are you playing your part? Are you doing the part that he's given you to play in his salvific plan? I'm saying we can speak that thing, but are you doing that thing? And when you're doing that thing, what thing are you speaking? Note that the proverb says, a person will be satisfied by the good from the fruit of its mouth and from the work of a person's hands. All in all, we have a part to play in God's plan. We should be putting our hands to something and put our mouth to speak about it. Are we playing our part? What are you speaking? And in reference are you with your speaking, what are you doing? No believer God has called to sit on a sideline because we all play a part in the game. But I'm saying when you allow the seconds to run off the clock for you start to realize that you had a part to play. What are you doing? Are you playing your part? The part that God is calling you to play, not the part that you want to play. Are you speaking what he's saying? Or are you speaking what you want to say? See, I want to say this and speak this because sometimes we do not understand how it is a blessing that God has really given us a part to play. That he's allowed us in his sovereignty to be a part of his plan. So I ask, are you playing your part? What need is not being fulfilled because you refuse to play your part? Do you hear what I'm saying? Because every single day you have an opportunity to play a important role in God's plan. And I'm telling you, we can talk 
ourselves out of realizing the importance of our part. The Bible says every part of the body is utilized for the good of the body. That the nose cannot say to the feet, nor the ear can say to the mouth that you're not needed. Because your part is needed. As a matter of fact, he says, if you think your part is insignificant, that part in itself is even more significant than what you think. But I'm saying we can talk ourselves out of our part and be blinded by what we think is important parts and we chase those things. And in chasing those things, we neglect our own part. I'm saying, are you putting your hands to the plow? Are you doing your part that God is calling you to play? Are you playing all these other but yet not playing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you talking a big game, but yet you live little? You tell everybody about God is giving you these dreams, these visions, but yet I when were we going to see some action with that? When will we see your hands going in reference to what you've been speaking? Are you just lip service? But when will we see the service with your hands? And on the flip side, for those, we see service with your hands, but you never give him any praise with your mouth. Somehow in there, you start taking all the glory. Somewhere in there, you forgot to give him praise. You forgot to pray to him, communicate to him because he's the one that's keeping you in the work that you're doing. And you wonder why you get stressed out, burnt out, tired of, ready to give up on the work. Because somewhere in there, you start playing the part. And you took it up on yourself, forgetting that it's his part that he allows you to play. I'm just saying, are you doing your part? Are you doing your part? Do you understand that you have a part to play? That God called us to fellowship with him. To fellowship with him. To be reconciled back to him in order that we will fulfill his will on earth. It's amazing that God does not do some things that he can do because he's waiting for you. He's waiting for me because we play a part in his plan. See, and I, I want us to really understand this because we all have a part to play, but I want us to get some clarity in this real quick as well. When I say that we have a part to play, that does not mean go make it happen yourself. Sometimes we take it as, well, faith, the Bible says faith with works and our works be, we have to go make it happen ourselves. That's not the works that he's talking about. The works that he have, he's talking about has nothing to do with us going to go make it happen ourselves. That's selfish. Because he never called us to go make it happen ourselves. Let me give you an example of that. In the book of Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. They're headed to the promised land. God has given them this land that he says is flowing with milk and honey. And God said, I'm going to defeat the people in the land. And as God said, I'm going to defeat them. God says, I'm going to use you in defeating them. But I'm going to do the work. But you have a part to play. By believing in what I'm doing and obeying my instructions so that you can defeat them. Because I've already defeated them. I just need you to walk that thing out. Have faith enough to believe in the instructions I'm giving you. But watch this. This is them in Numbers chapter 14. The Bible says, where we at, where we at? Okay. No, I'm way in 15. The Bible says it like this. When Moses 
this is verse 39. When Moses reported all these words to the Israelites, the people were overcome with grief. So they had just come, moved in unbelief. And so Moses tells them, they got up early the next morning and went up to the ridge of the hill country saying, let's go to the place the Lord promised for we were wrong. So they recognized they were wrong in some of the things they were doing. And Moses responded, why are you going against the Lord's command? It won't succeed. Don't go because the Lord is not among you and you will be defeated by your enemies. So they recognized some things they did before that was, that was wrong earlier. But then they decided, you know what? We're going to go just make this happen. And Moses tells them, man, look, what, what are you talking about? Why are you going against the Lord's command? You will not succeed. You're going to go up here and try to fight them, but you won't succeed because that's not following the Lord's instructions. You're trying to go out here and make it happen yourself. And the Bible says they went up there and they were defeated by their enemies. See, and I want us to get that mind state. That's what happens when we go out there and try to make something happen. We would not succeed ultimately because we're doing it by the work of us and not the work of him. When it comes to God, he makes it happen. And what he makes happen, I just obey in how he's making it happen. You don't have to go do all of that and all of this in order to make it happen, in order to receive a blessing from God. Because if it's a blessing from God, it's God that gives the blessing. All I have to do is obey. Some of us, we stress ourselves out trying to chase and do this and we'll will somehow deceive ourselves by saying, you know what, it's by faith, by works. You know, I have to put my hands to the plow. No, 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 no. That's not putting your hands to the plow. That's you deciding on how you plow and what you will plow. But putting hands to the plow is putting our hands to what God already said. And sometimes it's, waiting on God when he says it's time. Being patient and letting patience have his perfect work. And in that patience is allowing God to build me however he wants to build me until he allows that thing to come forward and me to move forward in it. But that's the part that he's calling us to play. It's not us going to go make it happen but it's us surrendering to what he's already made happen. Why can't we wait on the Lord? And in your waiting, he will have you do things because sometimes we need more discipline. We need to get more discipline in areas. And in that waiting, there is a requirement because in the waiting is actually moving forward. Because that's part of what God is doing in order for him to make that thing happen. Because he has to get some things in us prepared. But sometimes we can be deceived and say, you know what, I got to go make it happen. And we put our hands on things God didn't call us to put our hands on. There we go trying to make the promise happen. Okay, God told me uh, that he's going to give me the promised land. Let me go up there and fight the way I want to fight and do what I want to do. God said, no, no, no. Moses told him, no, no, no. That, that, that's not doing your part. You decided on the part and then you trying to go do it and then want God to bless it. No, doing your part is doing the part that he's called you to fulfill in the manner that he's calling to it to, for it to be fulfilled. So our far morning medicine, we have to do our part. Are you doing your part? Are you grateful that you've been called to do a part? Your part as a housewife, your part as a husband, your part as, at your job. That's a part that God's called you to play on his salvific plan. And sometimes we don't know how that part all comes together. But the question is not trying to understand how it comes together. Are you doing your part? 
Man, I'm saying if God is caught, man, man, look, do the best. Why? Because everything is for his glory. And I'm just trying to do the part that he's called me to play. Are you doing your part? Or are you caught up in everybody else's part? Or are you still trying to make it happen on your own? Are you trying to go up and fight these battles how you want to fight? No, no, do your part. Do your part. It's not your battle in the first place. It's his battle. And will I play my part in how he chooses for me to fight that battle? And sometimes fighting a battle is not saying anything but being quicker to listen and slower to speak. Sometimes fighting a battle is allowing God to use me to give a kind word. And that's the part I have to play. Because I don't have to respond in that manner. This is your morning medicine. I'm done with this thing. Are you doing your part? As God has given us breath in our body today. As today is called today. Are you doing your part that he's given you to play? Are you doing your part? I don't care what it is and what it's in. The question still comes. What are you doing your part? I don't care what your situation or circumstance looks like. It still begs the question, are you doing your part? Or are you trying to take his promise without him? Do your part, for your part is critical in his plan. God bless you all.